Good evening everyone, Rachel here, back with another Gold Forge video. It's Friday, so it's time for Friday Reveals. And this one has been a long time coming. Ever since he was leaked was by Larden at Gamescom. It's one that I've been super excited to look at. And it's finally been given to us. It's funny, I was actually making a thumbnail for the video that I dropped this morning. Which is, obviously I'm recording this in advance, so it was Wednesday. Um... I literally just finished the thumbnail and then Susie dropped the details for this and I was like, oh my god! So, yeah, buzzing to get into this one with you guys. So, grab a drink, grab some snacks, grab your favourite Bram Stoker novel and without further ado, let's get into it. So if it wasn't already apparent from the thumbnail or anything I've said previously, we are, of course, looking at Dracula today. Now, Dracula is a fictional character invented by, I think he was Irish novelist Bram Stoker, who was sort of based on the 15th century governor in Romania, Vlad the Impaler. Now, whether we're going to have Vlad the Impaler as well at some point, no one knows. I imagine not. Um, but yes, so like all these other character designs, we're going to look at the mood boards, we're going to look at the 2D concepting all the way up to the 3D. So, here we go. <coughs> so, looking at the mood boards, as I say, they are um, a few details that we can notice here. So, he is going to be a brawler. We can see that up here. Legendary character as well. I actually had him as an epic on my website, so I'm going to bump him up there. Virage, and he's got some sort of vampiric sword. So the cool thing about that is, it, you know, already I'm sort of thinking um, he will hit harder or do more damage the more people he kills. So potentially could be like a good campaign farmer, dungeon farmer, you know, something along those lines. Uh, refined, pristinely handsome older gentleman with vampiric... Uh, accoutrements, I think that says. So, Viraz, drawn from Slavic Pagan, you know. I, I wonder if they've actually taken some of this off on purpose so that we don't know too much about his kit. But anyway, all of those little details aside, apologies. I'm very observant. I like to look for, like, hidden details and things like that. So, anyway, mood boarding. So, we have the um, Dracula film. Now, I actually remember watching this when it came out, thinking it was actually pretty good, but if you look at Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb, I think it was very much a, an L there. Um, and then we got various portraits. This is, a, obviously, Vlad the Impaler. This is, probably looks like another, like, 80s sort of retro film. And just some sort of, like, other arts and things there. Moving on to the next one, oh, we've got some fashion patterns, um, patterns need more research, okay, but you've got like these gothic sort of looking gloves, sort of noblistic there as well, sort of robing there as well, not entirely sure where the fashion catwalks come in from here, but again still very cool to see. Next we come to facial vibes and interesting capes. Yeah, I mean, if we take anything from The Incredibles, it's uh, <laughs> not every hero needs a cape. I forget the little lady's name, but she was funny. Not capes. Oh, he had a great look. Oh, the cape and the boots. No capes. Anywho, again, they're drawing on inspiration from different games and things like that. This bottom one feels, actually, I was going to say feels very Diablo 4. That might be Lost Souls 2 or something. I can't quite make that out down there. Um, but yeah, stand sort of vampire tropes. And I say, like, from what I remember, he was sort of a very... Upper class gentleman, if you will, sort of thing. Sort of highborn, noble kind of thing. And again, that probably links back to the Vlad the Impaler sort of uh, inspiration. But looking at the capes, I like the sort of... I mean, this is obviously very extravagant and over the top. I like sort of like the 
nightly sort of shadow feel that we've got on some of these as well. Um, this one, I guess, they've just picked out because it's got the red interior, that sort of bloodline. And again, very wispy there. I like that. Moving on. Okay, so I guess these are some of the points uh, that they've made. So point two, they want less armor, if anything, leather armor, and a face more like uh, Castlevania Vlad Tepe's like cape still prominent. So Castlevania is actually not a game that I've played, but I imagine some of these are from that. Yes, Nandor is a very nice example. I guess that's this gentleman. Yeah, Nandor, what we do in the shadows. Oh, okay, there's just some of his outfit. Another one of Vlad there. It's it's interesting looking at this, because I obviously have seen the finished product now. And it, it looks so good. But it's interesting to see where they've come from there. Uh, point three. One, but more amount of cloth, perhaps a jacket. Patterns, armour can be made of leather as well so this is Vito the dusk rose it's from magic the gathering a game that i love to play as well edgar markov there is vampire lord um, again this feels very lost souls but yeah i do agree with them that in that dracula shouldn't necessarily be heavily clad in armor as well if you think of at least in games i've played and things i've experienced Vampires are very quick, agile characters. You know, they're not necessarily going to be like these two gentlemen here, heavily clad in armor, because it will slow them down. Um, so it's been very much sort of leather and cloth feel. Doesn't mean to say you can't have vampire knights, but in my experience, I like where they're going with that sort of thing. So taking a look at the next slide, noble vampire type of characters, references for colours and layering, uh, fluted, full armour, spiky emphasis on K, fancy shapes, asymmetric. We have a lot of armour characters on Avalon, but the shapes here are interesting. Metal could be switched for leather at some point. So this guy's from the Warhammer Vampire Lords. I've played Warhammer as well. That looks like Sauron. Not sure where some of these other guys are from. Um, Diablo, obviously, four there. Like, this cape is wicked as well. Same sort of vibe. But, yeah, very much, if I was to do it, I'd very much go with sort of, like, this kind of feel. But I'd very much go for sort of, like, a leathery kind of feel. Um, Albate, all these vampire lords are, again, heavily clad. No, I, th I think this next one might be the 2D concept, I think. Yes. How how good does that look? That looks... All, all of them looked wicked. Now, when I first saw this, okay, um, for me, I liked 2 and 3. Okay. Um, those are the ones that sort of stood out to me the most. I um, wasn't a fan of sort of the like bat wings are cool obviously vampire bats that kind of thing but i didn't like them down here okay and i didn't like this one mainly because obviously you associate vampires with blood but there's like too much crimson for me like it all sort of blurs and blends in together there wasn't enough separation um whereas the two you've got the distinct separation in colors between the blue and the red for example and in this case you've got like your silver armor and things from there um i love the collar i love both of them i actually prefer say sort of this collar just here i wasn't necessarily a fan of these massive spiky shoulder pads i do think you should have had some similar ones just here and yeah you've got like sort of the highball noble sort of leather armor feel there and this is like a stereotypical vampire lord so these all looked very cool and then we came to the weapons okay so and when they mentioned the vampiric sword that we looked at the very top in that first one let's say you got the impression it was going to charge up with the more killing it does okay and this basically sort of confirms that to us at least in my opinion now we do have these two swords as long as they're not a great sword, that kind of like big sort of two-handed zwei handler, anything like that, they need to be like a more like a finesse weapon, like a rapier, that kind of thing. 
again my personal opinion but that's how i feel he should be so this looks more like a, a two-handed sort of wielded sword whereas this one here feels more like a one-handed sort of rapier so this looks cool a looks cool don't get me wrong but you know in my eyes i would have lent with b so so i would have taken sort of combinations of two and three and gone with sword b so next we come to uh, the points that, uh, or the feedback that Fateless gave the 2D artists. And it was interesting to say that they also highlighted 2 and 3. Again, those were the things that I liked the most as well. Now, so I did jump ahead and look at the final concepts early today, just out of excitement before I went to work, but I didn't get a chance to read these. So, um, so they said, in general, we find him too stocky and laterally orientated in his silhouette. His underlying rig is still the super buff model, muscle guy rather. Um, we need more varieties, this might be a good opportunity to do it. I suppose this links back to Simon's Tuesday video in a way, where they sort of took a step back, put some things on hold to change some of the models for the rigging to give more variety in the game, so not everyone was the same. Uh, Gino Luke Coling, hello to you there, sir or madam. Um, he's a newly proportioned gentleman. We think we need a tall, more slender rig for characters. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Not every man is built the same. Not everyone's got abs like Simon. Obviously, Simon is built like Hercules. Me, I'm built more like Dionysus. And then you've got some people who are slender. So. It's nice to have that sort of replicated in the game. Of course, their tallness can be determined by scaling the character, so a taller, more slender look should be added for a variety of characters, wizards and such. Um, otherwise, moving on to the points. Number one, we like the hairstyle from two, in this case, the left one. Yeah, OK, like that. Um, but the face and grey hair of three. Dracula needs a little bit of sensuality, yet yeah, very sort of charming sort of individual needs to be. So if we can lower his neckline with a deep V of some sort, it would add to his sleekness. So, yeah, like what they've done here. So similar to what they did with Thor, actually, sort of opening up that middle area there. Um, so you can see the sort of the neck and things like that. I suppose that's kind of appropriate for vampires. And yeah, so they're, they're putting this hairstyle over the top of this one here, but keeping the grey, he is obviously an ancient sort of figure. Uh, now point number two was continuing a more vertically oriented Dracula. We think we sh can keep the style of the shoulder pads, but make them sleeker and more conforming to his shoulders, cascading down the sides. So yeah, rather than sort of protruding outwards, sort of coming down, and this is one of Dane's uh, sort of... Uh, Overdraws, if you were, the line sketches, which I do love to see. It's almost like he's just put tracing paper over the top, but I still still think it's cool to see and something that, you know, I wish I could do at least. So that was point one and two. Point number three, sort of damned by the shoes. While he can be armoured in several places, we think he should have a nice high-worn boots, like from two, or like from many of the mood wall examples like Castlevania Dracula and they did say that was a key thing that they liked that particular game so they've brought those sort of shoes sort of over for not sure what for is pointing to specifically oh this is just a can we make him taller no oh okay fine so that's just like a little error and five we prefer the asymmetric sword are on board with the weapon giving a visual effect based on mechanics so yeah mechanics Definitely he's going to be sort of, again, some sort of getting stronger the more he kills or something like that, damages. But yeah, interesting points there. I'd say stuff that I brought up myself similarly, I believe, or at least I think I had was on a similar wavelength. And yeah, I do like the fact that we're getting to see this sort of stuff now. The transparency, I think, is one of Fadeless's best points and sharing that with us. Um... But yeah, looking very good. So now the big reveal. After all of that, we came to this. He's, he's just perfect in my mind. I love everything about this. I love the cape. 
sort of the sort of crimson feel again the collar the hairstyle i liked i think it was spot on and he just he just looks amazing now whether the eyes are glowing all the time we don't know it could be like thor where it only happens sort of when he's powered up or he's done an ability love the stash and the little goatee just there I have a small one myself, but that's because I can't grow hair anywhere else, but enough about my hair follicles. Yeah, just, I love everything about this guy. I've not seen him in game like hell, but I imagine he's going to be one of my favourite characters aesthetically as well. The gloves again, looks like perhaps they power up with him. The mean looking claws, and again, you've just got the waviness sort of interior of the cape there he looks so good love the pauldrons that are so more slender slimline and yeah i think they've taken a little bit of the armor off the sides as well so if we compare like this one because this is sort of the body do you know mm. Maybe they've just toned it down a little bit, but it could again just be as simple as the fact the boots are more sort of notable than uh, noble sort of highball sort of boots. But yeah, just it's so good. I, I love it. It looks so good. So if we move on to the next slide, this is where we start to see him in game. Okay, and yeah, just there's no, there's not too many more adjectives I can use <laughs> really sensational fantastic you know it it all looks great and I love these sort of block outs and things like that and again just like even down to the facial features you know I'd kill from a star like that I've got like handlebars myself but very poignant stands out and obviously a key feature as, as, as well as Vlad had it himself I believe when it comes to the high poly of the tunic and in the shoulder arms, it's again just very vibrant, I suppose, which is always going to be when it's a sort of like a crimson red vampire feel going to battle. This is day 11 at this point. This is day three. This is, you know, day 11. Let me come to sort of the gauntlets. Again, this is just showing sort of some of the patterns that they saw. Uh, what that they wanted to put on there again just tying in with sort of the romanian i suppose sort of feel and again like everyone else armored ready to make a big punch <laughs> day 40 so is him coming along now i mentioned sort of we'll have some sort of vfx on the inside of the cape here and i think that will look really cool sort of like that sort of shimmer going up the cape there and slowly petering out. But yeah, it looks, yeah, fantastic. It's so good. And then for day 15, all coming together right there. You know, and I've said it time and again, it's important to have the back looking right, considering that is the angle we're going to see most of the time. And Moss does like little bland at the back here i think once it gets into game and this is all waving around you got these transcending up here i think it's going to look smart it's funny really because you know this for you is really only going to be for us in the index or the champ the sort of team selector that kind of thing a lot of the time you're just going to be seeing this but yeah love that sort of chess piece and then it as you saw in the thumbnail, here he is, just you know, you're just in awe, really, aren't you? And then in, I believe the last one that we have is the final texture. So this is this is Vlad, right here, done, dusted. He's in the game, and we knew that obviously from Tuesday's video that he had been completely finished, even though he was spoiled to us as a two three months ago now. I like that you see sort of like the leather at this point. At least it feels very leathery at the top there. You see, you see, see the fabric, that sort of thing there. 
yeah, just looks yeah, very, very good. Once again, the artists and everyone at Thales are knocking it out of the park. And then the last picture, this is the view we are going to see most often. And yeah, that bloodstained cape, those powered up gaunters, Dracula is ready to stomp onto our screens and crush our enemies with his sword and other abilities. Now, we know that he's a brawler, so he might not just do more damage when he kills stuff, he might gain HP as well, gain stronger. Um, and likewise, perhaps we have the negative effect that, you know, if he doesn't kill people, he gets weaker. Sort of that sort of stereotypical bloodlust that the vampires have that you see in all the games and movies, that kind of thing. The longer they go without it, the weaker they become. You know, we'd future rage would hear. As I was editing the video and we got to the part where I was talking about bloodlust and how vampires get weaker, I also... It led me back to this particular Fateless video where they're talking about game ideas. Now, also, linking to that bloodlust, you know, again, in games and films, if vampires go too long, it becomes insatiable, where they start looking at friends as potential sources of blood. And it led me back to this. Let's just take a look. Enemies attack their own team. Interesting. Have champions abilities in the game to force an enemy to attack their own team through mind control, glamour, confusion, with a percentage chance. Berserker, percentage chance to attack allies and raise attack, but a percentage chance to attack you as well. That's very cool, actually. Uh, can add higher crit as attacking own team surprises them. Lots of ways to make this interesting. Ah, some of the, I, this is literally my first read of the list that Gramps has done. So some of these I don't really want to talk about. <laughs> so I think there's a reason Simon didn't want to talk about it. And we all know that is because they'd already had something like that in the game. Maybe it's Dracula. Maybe that insatiable bloodlust, if you don't kill anything, you don't do anything for too long, you don't do damage, there is a percentage chance you hit your friends. We figured it out, guys. Let's go, team. Anyway, back to past me. Become, you know, we don't know if there's a day or a night mode yet, or night fights. But if there is, maybe it gets weaker during the day. There's so many avenues they can go down with this character. But I would be surprised that you say if we don't see some sort of getting stronger when you kill stuff, and even lifesteal or drain effect, you'd like to think that if he doesn't place it himself, he'll gain some sort of benefit when there is one on whomever that he is targeting. And there we go, guys. That is it for today. That is our little dive into the Count himself in the game of Godforge. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. Take care. Look after yourselves. Work hard. But as always, play harder. And I'll see you in another one soon. Cheers.